a disease, you see the sign. Abi, you contract a disease that's an infection that moves into a disease. Eh? There are signs. That is why we go to hospital. The doctors, first of all, look at our vital signs. These are signs. So he says, ah, your temperature is high, your blood pressure is low, or whatever, all those signs. They are now, you know, those first signs that they check, now give them a little clue as to what the issue is. A little clue. Sometimes they can even treat you from there. Sometimes. But you know, it is called provisional diagnosis. They just give you some medications, you know, particularly where there are no laboratories to run tests. But those are signs. Everything has signs. Children have signs. We've just been discussing it. All these things, there are signs everywhere. Likewise, anybody who is born again, there's a sign that follows the person. The primary sign is not casting out devils or speaking in tongues. The primary sign is love for saints. It's primary. Do you understand? Are you following? Are you learning something? Now, just in case you are born again and that love is not welling from your heart for God's people, you need to cry out to God for understanding of what happened to you. If, for instance, I am born again and I see my brother or sister in need and I turn the other way, there's something wrong with my salvation. I have observed a brother or sister, the person has been wearing one cloth for a very long time, one shoe for a very long time, nothing. And in my own wardrobe, I have clothes I no longer wear. Sometimes I wear one cloth and after washing it, it stays for another six or even one year before it resurfaces. That's the number of clothes I have. And then there's another person who comes to church. And sometimes, you know, we come to church like this. Once we share the grace, everybody runs to hit the door. People don't even look around to see. Because one of the things we do in church, besides fellowshipping with one another, is building social networks. The person sitting next to you could be your plug for higher ground. And you don't know. You snub that person thinking that um, the person is worth nothing. You may not know that the person is the PA to somebody. Or the person knows somebody that you need to know. And then you snub the person and check out like that. This is how people's, people shrink their world. They make it smaller and smaller. You, you get that? Hmm? This yes sir is not good. Okay. Okay, let's continue. There's somewhere I'm getting to. Cease not. So the moment we got to know this, we cease not to give thanks for you. So the first thing is to thank God for any time there's a new believer. One of the first things to do to God for the new believer is to thank God for the new believer. You think it's easy to be born again. I'm going to show you what happened. So making mention of you in my prayers. Look at the next verse. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. What will come next will require the spirit of wisdom and revelation. You don't understand it with your own human thinking. It transcends your mind. With your finite mind, you cannot understand what an infinite God does. So you need this spirit. You need to cry out. Anybody that must understand what Paul wrote next must cry out for the spirit of wisdom. That's the one that now moves the person into the dimension and realm of God. So that the person now sees through God's perspective. That everything God does, the person gets the right perspective on it. That's the type of thing that Paul will write. He said, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. There's something that has happened. Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. We used to know Christ like that. Peter, when, you know, we were discussing it yesterday. Peter, when um, Jesus asked them, who do men say that I am? And after they said so many things, he now asked them, who do you say? And Peter spoke up and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. It was that connection. It was this spirit operational in Peter at that time. He connected to it and got into the dimension where he saw through God's perspective concerning his son. 
a lot of people were seeing him as Elijah, as Jeremiah, as one of those prophets. But he tapped into the spirit, the workings of the spirit, and then got to that dimension. And now, long before Paul the Apostle wrote Corinthians, Peter had tapped into that thing. So Peter saw clearly and was able to define, recognize, and discern the Son of God. That's what Paul now wrote later and said, Henceforth know we no man after the flesh, though we once knew Christ that way. But now we no longer do that. So if somebody is born again, a new creature he is. Old things. So the person who came to the altar is not the person who goes back to his seat. It's a new, just like Pastor Teacher said, the person has moved from point A to point B. You can't start assessing the person based on point A. Is his past, is history. Actually, as far as God is concerned, it does not exist. He has taken it out of the picture completely, obliterated it completely. So he said, this is what we need to ask. I think we should take out about 30 seconds and pray this prayer. Lord, open my, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. It's not in any type of knowledge, Joe. It's the knowledge of him. Pray that prayer. Everybody pray that prayer. Open my eyes, oh God, and get me into that dimension where I see through your eyes. Let me not see like man sees. There's a prophet that wanted to make that mistake. He was looking like man. If not that God intercepted him. He said, no, 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 no. That's not how I look. We will miss out on God if we do not get the God perspective. And it's this spirit that imparts it. Spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's continue. Look at what that thing will now make us know. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. See the first thing to know. That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. You were not called into a hopeless life. There's no believer that God calls into a hopeless experience. No, there's a hope. There's a reason. There's an end point. There's something because it's that hope that motivates us to live the life. Said those who have this hope in himself, the one who has this hope purifies himself. So it's that motivation, is the hope. You know, I've said it, you know, given an analogy many times as children, even as adults, for some people, when you are given food with meat, obstacle, many times the meat. For me in particular, I don't know about others. But for me, the meat is the motivation for eating the food. Once there is no meat or fish or obstacular movement in the food, no, 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 I don't have motivation for it. Even till now. For my own, it has not changed. I don't know. For some people, it has changed. You know, there are some people who they want to start eating. They eat meat first. I don't, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I don't understand it. Because for me, it's the meat that will be last. You keep the best for last. When you have now finished the food, uh -huh, you now, particularly if it's chicken, you now balance and begin to dissect. You know, you get into the sur surgical process. You begin to dissect some things. Are you getting my point? So that's the motivation. So God called us into that type of thing. There is a hope of our calling. So God did not just start calling people, calling people, calling people, just come inside. What are we supposed to do? Nothing. They are just looking. And he just called you so that you come and sit down and be resting. Okay, resting unto what? So after resting, you now get up and then rest again. Then sleep. Then wake up from sleep and rest from sleep. And then rest to sleep. <laughs> no, you keep right. No, 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 no. There's a hope. Are you getting the point? Okay. So after that, there's another one. He now said, And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance were in. Listen, look at your neighbor for me. Ask the person, Are you born again? What was the person's answer? Is it positive? 
Now tell that person if the answer is positive. Tell that person you are God's inheritance. And that inheritance has glory. Therefore you've got glory. That is why the Bible says, tell the person be preaching. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Christ in you the hope of glory. Tell the person again, you've got glory. Let nobody put you down. Let no organization put you down. You've got glory. Now, he went further to say that this, the inheritance, that inheritance, he has it in. So the saints are like his field that he purchased. Actually, that's what Paul calls it, that we are God's farm or garden or field. So he purchased us. And you know, when a man purchases land, he fences it in and then begins to make investment. Why? God is making investment in me is because he has purchased me. It's only a madman that starts making investment in a piece of land he did not buy. Yes. Yes. Even as a tenant, tenants are dark of flower. <laughs> but once you purchase the property, yeah, you begin to do wonders. Sometimes you tear some parts down. That is why when God purchases you in Christ, he tears some parts down. The tearing down is a building up process. Sometimes it requires things to be turned down first before they are built up next. So sometimes when some painful things, I, 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 Lord, you are, you are breaking me. The breaking is necessary for your building. Without the breaking first, there can be no building. You know, I, we have a builder here. You know. Uh -huh. So you are getting the point. So he said this. Now, anybody that is not in Christ, God has no business investing in you. He will give you divine direction. He won't give you divine protection. He won't give you anything. He shows you mercy based on the prerogative of mercy. Not by covenant. We are going to make a call. Anybody that is not born again, whether you are offline or online, respond to the call so that God can purchase you in Christ Jesus. So you become his glorious inheritance. And that inheritance also has not just glory, but riches. You know, the other day we were talking about if you put something in a freezer. The freezer was designed to cool things and freeze them. You put something in the freezer and plug it and switch it on. You don't start speaking and talk in the name. Oh God, let this freezer freeze. Oh God, in the name. You don't start doing vigils and even add fasting so that the freezer will freeze your food. Do you do that? In Christ, prosperity is grossly enhanced. Actually, is a default setting in Christ. Once you come into Christ, is now your default setting. Does you prosper effortlessly? Because the inheritance has riches. <laughs> it has riches. Look at your neighbor for me again. Ask the person, are you sure you are born again? Sure born again. What was the answer? Yes. Tell the person, you have, you have riches at your disposal. At your Don't, die Don't die as a pauper. There's more, There's more. and much more. And much more. Please, Please assess it. Now, I need you to preach to the person again. Tell the person in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. The Bible says that God, according to his divine power, had given unto us. Ask the person how many things? Okay. Now, all things are available. Tell the person, all things are available. All things are available. To, you. to you. Tell the person again, hear me. Hear me. I, didn't say I didn't say most things. I didn't say almost all things. Almost all things. Tell the person, all things. all things. Ask the person, what's your definition of all things? Does it include health? 
Does it include marital bliss? Does it include your accommodation? Does it include your academics? Does it include your relationships? Does it include your whatever? Somebody shout all things. Say it again. Say it one more time. But look at your neighbor. Tell the neighbor, this is now the challenge. Yeah, the voices are down. Tell the person, the challenge now is that these all things are tied to the progressive knowledge of him. Tell the person, the more you know him, the more you assess all things. Uh, so, advise the person candidly and sincerely. You know, sincere milk of the word. Advise the person sincerely. Do you want all things? Then get to know him better. Don't skip devotions. Don't skip services. That's the part people don't like. <laughs> uh, but that's where God tied the all things. True. So we assess these things through our knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. Okay, so um, let's go back. Let's go back, please. Oh, oh, you need to contribute, but there's something I want to read. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to who? To who? Do you believe? Yes. To who? To me. Uh -huh. Wait. Do, are you sure you believe? Yes. Now he says this power is exceeding great. And he shows us what the power did. And he said this power is not kept from us. It is kept for us. Actually, it is given to us. And he went down to say that this power is according to that mighty one that he did when he raised Christ from the dead. It is called resurrection power. Let's watch this. Now, I want everybody to listen to this, or both those online, whatever, wherever you are watching from, hear this. When Jesus died, he stayed in the grave for how long? Three days. You know, once you die, gradually all your organs shut down. There's what is called rigor mortis. Your muscles stiffen. You know, that is why if somebody dies, you need to stretch him out. Because if his leg is like this, after some time, it will say you need to break it for it to straighten out. So, there are so many things that begin to shut down. And then for three days, all the organs must have completely shut down. And then putrefaction should have started. But resurrection power doesn't mind or care how long it has been in the grave. Resurrection power doesn't care how long that womb has not received a child. It doesn't care. It doesn't care what the doctor's report is. It, does, it doesn't consult it to now address a man's issue. It doesn't care whether you have money for the accommodation or not. It doesn't care. Resurrection power doesn't care how long you've been an average student. Resurrection power doesn't care how long you've been a professional student. If you understand what I mean. Resurrection power doesn't care how long you have been in school. Resurrection power doesn't care how long your business has been average. Resurrection power doesn't care how long clients have moved away from your business center. Resurrection power doesn't care. It doesn't consult all those things. Because when resurrection power comes, things that have been dead for years live. Do you know that third day when resurrection power came? The kidneys came up. Liver came up. The heart started beating again. You know, RP, you sang it. Breath came back. Oh, for three days. And you know, a day in God's sight is like 1,000 years. 
How long have you been in that situation? How long has your family been in that situation? How long has your finances been in, this, in the grave, in the mortuary? How long has your brain, you have tried to read with understanding? Anytime you read, it's like understanding is a stranger to you. And it has lasted for a number of years to the point that your family members have said you will never do well. Right from when you were a child, they spoke that into your life and you grew up with it. There's so many other things that have gone wrong. Listen, today, look at your neighbor and say today. There's going to be an encounter with resurrection power. Anything that is relevant to your destiny that has been laid in the grave. Hi! You know, when Jesus came to Lazarus' hometown, they asked where, he asked him, where have you laid him? There are some people you have completely concluded that you cannot give better again. You now carried your womb and laid in the grave. You carried your academics and laid in the grave. Carried your business, say you will never do well and laid in the grave. This marriage can no longer work. You now take it and lay it in the grave. Listen, resurrection power is coming. Actually, it's available. It's available. It's available right now. This, what I'm saying now is somebody's healing. Somebody is having an encounter right now with resurrection power. Let me even tell you, the day you got born again, there was the insurgent of that power into your spirit. Every, so you can't tell me that your kidney is bad. No. Not when resurrection power is at work. You can't tell me you have a liver issue. You can't tell me you've got cancer when resurrection power is at work. You can't say that. You can't tell me that you are dull of understanding when resurrection power is at work. You can't say that. When resurrection power is at work, you become a high flyer. Because that is where resurrection power operates. It picks people from a place of dishonor and sets them in honor. Because he that ascended first descended. So he picks people from a place of descent and sets them in a place of ascent. Oh, I'm speaking English. I'm speaking spirit English. Somebody's state is going to change this morning. Actually, somebody's state is changing already. Resurrection power is picking you from where you came from and is setting you to where he is. Where you operate far above. Far above. Far above. All principalities, powers, rulers, whatever it is, that any time you want to talk with them, you don't need to waste your time. Write whatever you say under your shoes and put your leg down. They will look up to read it. Somebody has been under the power of fear. Resurrection power will break that bondage. Tonight you are going to sleep like a baby. Whatever it is that has taken sleep from you, God through the resurrection power, will take that thing from you. Amen. Because God gives his beloved sleep. Yes. Are you God's beloved? Yes. You've got to get sleep, man. Yes. Both of you can't be awake. <laughs> he neither sleeps nor slumbers. So who are you? Go to bed. <laughs> hey, are you getting my point? That is why you know, after all these things, Peter now understood it when he was taken into prison after the death of James. You know, Herod killed James, the people rejoiced, and then he felt that the Jews liked it and arrested Peter. Peter knew he had got the revelation because he was in the boat with Jesus, and Jesus was asleep, and there was a storm. But Jesus had the effrontery to sleep in a storm. When he now got into his storm, he remembered his master. He slept. Between two guards, he was sleeping. <laughs> hey. Don't be anxious. Don't fret. Go to bed. 
things are happening up and down. You know, I remember one of the stories of one of God's generals that came to, you know, at night in his house. He had a squeaking sound. He now came down and saw on his squeaking chair, his rocking chair, a skeleton smoking and rocking the chair. So the chair was making a squeaking sound. So he brought his lamp close to the skeleton and said, Oh, Satan, is that you? <laughs> he put off the lamp and went to bed. <laughs> and when you are done, lock the door. <laughs> when you finish enjoying my rocky chair, lock my door. <laughs> you know, for some people, that's the end of vigil. They will even pack out from the house. Say, this house is a haunted house. <laughs> They'll pack out. From today, unusual courage and boldness sets into your spirit in the name of Jesus. I think the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. The effort is coming on me, that mantle. But let me cool down a little bit because we need to do a little contribution. Please, let's continue with the impact of resurrection in the believer's life. Sir, thank you. Good morning, church. Thank you. Good morning. Give God praise. You know, in the book of John, chapter 10, um, verse 10, the Bible said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am yes. come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Yes. I think it was two or three days that I was sharing with you. I'll be on Wednesday while we are going home. That many times, you know, the steal, kill, and destroy, we understand it so much than we understand abundant life. Mm. So God did not just give us abundant life, but he gave us life that will counter the stealing, counter the killing, and counter the destroying, and then have excess. Mm. You know, so if the devil is taking five, I'm just trying to use mathematical, God gives us 10 or 15 or 100, so that even after removing the five, you still have excess. So what God has given to us is abundant life. But there's a place I want to share from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where the Bible actually started talking about resur explained resurrection. Mm, mm. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I'm going to read from verse 35. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 35. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Because you know, we have died with Christ and then we've resurrected with him. He now said, thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that, that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or some, or some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it had pleased him and to every seed his own body. 39, all flesh is not the same flesh, mm. but there is one kind of flesh of men, another mm. flesh of beasts, mm. another of fishes, and another of birds. Mm. There are also celestial bodies mm. and bodies terrestrial, mm. but the glory of the celestial is one, and mm. the glory of the terrestrial is another. 41, there is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differed from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Mm. It is sowed in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Mm. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. I'm going to stop here, but we can continue reading it. So I tabulated it actually on my on my scripture, on my on my on the Bible. So seed is sown. So when we died, we died as seed. But when we resurrected, it was a harvest unto God. Now, when we, when we uh, died, we died, corrupt, you know, corruption. It was corruption that was sown. So we gave our lives to Christ. While we were coming, giving our life to Christ, it was corruption. But at that moment, we said, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Everything that happened between the cross and the empty grave, was what happened at that moment. And then at that particular moment, something happened. There was incorruption. That is, we became, now not the body now, this body will still give way for the other body. So there was incorruption. We, we resurrected in the spirit. That is, it is not that person that walked up here that turned and left. It was a deep, and it had, that's how it happened. At that moment, so there was a new body that was, because the point is that 
it is not just like we read here that it is not the same body that was sown that actually resurrected when we saw a corn usually what we see we begin to see blades first and then even when the corn is going to come it's going to come a new cup of corn not a seed of corn yes. so when you know from this place also he said sown in weakness then we resurrected in power so when we were coming we were coming with all those ancestral causes yes. all those things running in our in our ancestry all those things running in our brain like you know from the old man but now that we have resurrected we resurrected in power mm -hmm. which means now that i am new this ancestral thing is no more mine because it's in this resurrection resurrection cannot be the same as as the seed it's not possible so if we understand it this way we now begin to place a demand just like you said and we discussed on wednesday that if we're going to walk in this thing we have to know it yes. the more we know it and we get a clear revelation of this thing we begin to now manifest what is already there yeah. because what we are now carrying is the resurrected body yes. not the not the corrupted body anymore now there were things that messed us up you know we, there were certain sin that we've lived in before we came to christ mm -hmm. now immediately we left that that place everything has that is lost its power but in my next contribution i'm now going to show us how we walk in it as for people that have received the resurrected body okay God bless us thank you thank you okay okay praise god thank Hallelujah. you very much sir. you see um i would like to establish this you know before you know the impact of um the resurrection why the resurrection you know the resurrection happened because the sacrifice was validated the sacrifice was accepted that is it was accepted that it could pay for everything it was accepted that is it occurred because nothing was heavy enough to keep it down it means that every state and every aspect of our life that thing could take care of it that is all that is needed to be a christian there is no backlog it was because that price could pay for it because if it if it could not pay for it the resurrection wouldn't have occurred that is why resurrection is the beginning and the foundation of christian faith it is one it, it, it is one um confidence we have that yes we are safe it is another confidence that yes indeed he who starts a thing would finish it another thing that that resurrection do to us as people is that it helped us exercise what was said in in in, in deuteronomy you know jesus uh, god said good and bad have i created it was only an advice to choose good that is the power of choice now and you watch if you follow the, the bible carefully before christ got to the cross he said it is my life i'm choosing to give it that is nobody is taking it from me i am the one giving it now it means that for all the progression from the cross down to the grave to the empty tomb he could have opted out at any time because it was his choice he could have called at the point he was giving vinegar and just say ah father release angels and take me out believe you me he would go mm. but then he was trying to teach us something that even if no matter how it is if you've decided on the process that was why salvation was not forced on you mm. He waited for you until you would align with what was said and then your will was submitted to accept it. Now, immediately you submit to a system, it's trying to tell you no matter how difficult it turns out to be. Remember when he was traveling, he even got to the point and he said, Father, let this cup pass over me. Mm. Because it became so difficult that the body could bear. Mm. But he understand this process that it is not about what you feel, but the choice you made that was why Hebrew said in, in, in Hebrews chapter 12, he said, For the joy that was set ahead of him, he endured the cross, which means he felt like giving up through the process. But he proved to us because through the, the, the resurrection that even though you feel like giving up, stay. Why? There is a glory. In, 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 in Romans chapter 8 and verse 18, let's see that quickly. I will tie it up here. Romans chapter 8. And verse 18 now you see that same glory that jesus had in mind when he was going through those rigorous pain those piercing those beating those dragging everything all there is he was teaching us to say regardless of what you experience 
Hold on, my friend. Do you know why? There is a glory. Now, he said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, regardless of the state that you are in, regardless of what, what is buffeting you, do you want to go back? Do you don't want to do again? Does, it, does this Christianity, it does not look like what you bargained for. Probably when you gave your life to Christ, you just thought the next thing you will buy Lamborghini, you just do this. It is not happening according to your plan. But he's saying, hold on. The suffering of this present time, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Mm. Why? Because it was the same glory that will be revealed in Christ that made him endure. That is, he stood by his choice till the very end. Why? There was a glory. Now, in, in verse 19, verse 19 quickly, it said, for the endless expectation. Now, if that part be endured, Everybody is awaiting. That is why even in your class and in your business place, people are expecting you as a believer to act in a certain way. Do you know their expectation? It is not because they are trying to mock you. It is because they believe you are more because Christ resurrected. They believe that you can finish anything they could not stand because the one whom you follow did it. Now it is because now everybody is waiting for your manifestation because the Son of God manifested. Assuming it did not manifest, assuming it did not manifest, people that same thing that was happening in your family that nobody is graduating, they wouldn't have expected you to graduate. Mm. That is, they are expecting you to graduate because Christ took up the, the, the course and he finished it. Mm. Remember, Adam started it, he could not. Mm. He didn't finish it. Mm. But Christ, which is the, the last Adam, mm. he took it up and he finished it. Mm. So on that base. It means that anything will start as a believer. Deciding under God, we have what it takes to finish it. That is, it oh. is a must. Mm. We can finish it. Mm. If it is pressure, as a matter of fact, the more the pressure, the sweeter the glory. Mm. If the pressure is no more, the testimony will not be sweet. You know, you know, you know, just imagine if, if uh, uh, you are an A student, you just wrote an exam, you just pass before you look, just make first class, you just come. But if in year three, that lecturer now told you you will not graduate from this school, you know, the testimony finally mm. is usually sweeter. They said I will not graduate, oh. mm. but yet, because I know, it's not just because I'm intelligent again, mm. because I endured it, I finished. So one thing that the resurrection imparted in us is this. We can finish anything. You can stand anything. You can start anything. You can dare anything. Because others fail is not a license for you to fail. Others stop. Yesterday, dad was telling us that even if people around you keep falling off, do you know the implication? It is because your glory is so bright that the devil wants to make you see things that does not look like where you are going to. But what are you looking at is the glory that was ahead. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time, the suffering of the grave, the suffering of the lashing, the suffering of vinegar and what have you, is not compared to sitting at the right hand of the Father. Mm. Jesus saw that. Mm. Now, the, 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 the big question is this, friends. What are you seeing? Are you seeing the end of the process you are currently in? The end is glorious. Mm. The end is glory. Mm. The end is glory. All you need to do, just rest on the resurrection power. Mm. If it is dying, and, and okay, I will say that in my next contribution. <laughs> but what I'm just saying, just relax. Because glory is at the end. Amen. Thank you. Please, brothers and sisters, let me say this before we continue. Remember, Talk is cheap. Yes, yes, Anybody yes, can yes, talk. Yes. The Christian experience is not just for talkers. Yes, yes. It's for those who practice. Yes. I will encourage everybody and advise sincerely everybody to see that particularly if you still have some issues with understanding the new birth, the implications and impact of the resurrection power in the life of a believer. That same working of his mighty power that he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. Because we were spiritually dead. Sin kills. That's why the wages of sin is death. So there is a principle that governs sin. It's the principle of sin and death. So once somebody sins, then there's death. It pays instantly. It doesn't wait till the end of the month. So we were accustomed to sinning. Therefore, we were in a dead state completely. So, 
new birth, redemption, receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior is the great, the place where God Almighty exerted his greatest power. Yes. Anybody that can lead another to Christ can raise the dead. It is even more difficult to lead somebody to Christ than to raise a dead person. It's more difficult. So you see, a spiritually dead person is in a more grievous state than a biologically dead person. That is the reason when it comes to spiritually dead men, you need to speak to them first. That's that woe in there. It's called a gospel. The gospel is God Almighty, Chai men. So will you marry me? So he will chike you first. And then, once you accept, he puts the wedding ring in your hand. And he marries you. And then you can imagine when God marries a man. God is not man. Neither is he like man. You can imagine when God marries you, how he will treat you. God is a gentleman. Loving father. And consuming fire. <laughs> uh, so that we balance it. Eh? <laughs> Are you getting the point? So please, everybody, I, I advise, after today, sit. I need everybody to walk in this. Sit down and study it. Remember, what you do not understand doesn't belong to you. One of the ways to understand is to sit down to read books. I, Daniel, understood by books. So when I sit to read, I should just like we read in that growing up spiritually, open my mind to new learning. Give the word of God access into me. Remember, the word that produces light and understanding is the one that enters. So, if I just read it, there's no guarantee it will produce light and understanding until I give it access into my spirit. And how do I do it? Meditating. Giving attention to it in my thoughts. Meditation is to the spirit what digestion is to the body. Is meditation that breaks things down. Your spirit can now assimilate it. So meditation translates head knowledge to heart revelation. It's now revealed to you. And once it is revealed to you, there's nothing the enemy can do. Yes. Because he has been yes. revealed to you. Yes. The problem will be when the translation does not occur. Yes. So a lot of people have head knowledge and still fall victims to the tricks of the enemy. Yes. Head knowledge doesn't keep Satan out. There's a revelation. Revelation of the spirit. That's the one where you speak it. Under revelation. You know the letter kills. And there's one that gives that revelation. It's called the spirit. He's behind the letter. He was the one that moved the man to write. So I move beyond the letters to the spirit. And how do I do it? Meditation. Meditation is turning aside to give a more careful attention to something. A more careful look at something. That's what Moses did in Exodus chapter 3. God showed him a burning bush. He would have just passed. Wow, why is this bush burning and not burnt? You know, some people will just make, even post it on Facebook. Burning, hashtag, burning bush things. You know, on Facebook. Wow, today, and they snap, selfie against the burning bush. Meanwhile, they don't know that God is showing them something. <laughs> they don't understand it. You know, they now snap and post it. You know, if this technology were there then, <laughs> even those people that were crossing the Red Sea would have snapped oh, selfie, yeah. you know, with sharks, yeah. with some of these things, you know, crossing the Red Sea things, hashtag, you know. So, you know, some people would have just done that and passed. But the Bible says, and Moses said, which means when God showed him that sign, God was watching his attitude. So when the Bible says, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not born? So somebody has not carried a baby for a long time. I've been in marriage for 15 years. 
Most of, even the doctors said that I can't have a child. My womb is not this. Womb. Or the, from the man, you have low sperm count or no sperm count. But how did Abraham and Sarah? Let me give this thing attention. Then he now turns, and once he turns aside, the thing is that when God showed Moses this, God was watching. The moment Moses said, I will do this, look at what God now did. Because my response to something that should get my attention will determine what God does next. Yes. Yes. Yes, so the Bible says, and when. Everybody say when. when. So there's a time frame. God was watching him. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, he called him. When he saw that the man has decided to give attention to this very issue, he revealed it to him. You see what the angel told Daniel when he came back after the 21 or during the 21 day fast. He said from the day you set your heart to understand, your prayer was heard. Everybody, please, this is my candid advice. Sit down. If there is any area of your life where resurrection power is not at work, there are people in the Bible who experienced it in those areas. For instance, if it's in your academics, look at Daniel. Look at Shadrach. Look at Meshach. Look at Abednego. Because for any divine revelation, there are divine regulations. For you to walk in a revelation, there are regulations. Actually, for you to get a revelation, there are some regulations you should have. If you go to the book of Daniel, you see the re revelation. I mean regulation. The first one was a consecration. He proposed in his heart not to defile himself. There were boundaries he set for himself. Okay, this week, I ain't going to touch social media. For the rest of whatever... I will limit my presence in social media. Once I get there, it's maybe just uh, do one or two things and I come out. You place that regulation. Once you do that and God sees it, you are in for a revelation. That's why after Daniel then finished doing this thing, the Bible now said, and God gave unto these children wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and then gave Daniel a little extra. The capacity to interpret dreams. Why? There were regulations they put. Placed boundaries around. Listen, brothers and sisters. Living carelessly does not attract God. You know one of the things that usually gets God's attention in a man's life? When the man consciously decides to give God attention. I've given social media attention enough. So social media, stop! You switch off your phone. God says, this guy seems to be serious. This one, stop. You shut your door. Hey. Radio, stop. You switch off your radio. Ha. Now, let's be watching. And the moment he sees you have put those, because those regulations reveal your value for what you want to receive. So once you set it, God says, hey, this guy is serious. Oh yeah, let's do the revelation time. You now open the Bible and once you open it, light hits you. Transformation takes place. Why? You have set the ground right for God to show up. God doesn't budge into people. God's ways are prepared. Have you heard that before? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. God is too gentle to budge in. If the way is not prepared, he doesn't show up. Before Elijah got fired down, he prepared the altar, built all those things, set everything in order. God saw it. He was attracted. Before Elijah finished praying, fire fell. Fire will fall on your altar. But the thing is that you need to prepare the way. Are you getting my point? 
you know you are supposed to contribute again and um, <laughs> yes please continue okay, praise the lord thank you very much because it, it's it's beyond talking just like we said it's actually beyond talking the reason we come to church is to lecture our spirit to teach our spirit corporately god among us like we were saying on wednesday you know coming to church on wednesday coming to church on friday will do you so much good yeah sunday sunday medicine will never do you any good we have so many things clamoring for our attention and you know the bible said in the book of hebrews as now that we see the day approaching that we should fellowship more mm. with the brethren because there are many times it's only on sunday people remember god mm. and then even that remembering god they are still checking time they are checking time and then throughout the week that, that's all we are you know this phone thing this social media it has it has you know done us so much but we can decide wednesday friday come to meetings uh, faith clinic prayer meetings so that your life will be changed hallelujah Amen. you know i wanted to flip from this first corinthians but there's something else i want to show us from there before i move still first corinthians chapter 15 verse 45 and so it is written the first man adam was made a living soul mm. the last adam was made a quickening spirit mm. now you know anybody that has received the resurrection power has the ability to transmit it mm. every anybody that receives the resurrection power has the ability to transmit it and what god wants to do god wants to fill the earth with his glory with his power with his light and the only person he's going to use is that person that has received resurrection power. In, in the book of 1 John chapter 5, somewhere, I think it's chapter 5, the Bible said that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in, in, his, in son. his son. And anyone that has the son has eternal life. That's, it's, I just got to that verse and I got stuck. You know, just like you're saying, sometimes, sometimes our head cannot capture, sometimes we can't capture it. We are trying to peep through. It's not touching you because it, there's no, you don't feel it. But this thing is true. You now stay on it. The truth is, if I have eternal life, I can transmit it. Yes. And that is why the ministry of reconciliation has been given to us. Mm. Because we have eternal life. Mm. Because the resurrection power, we are now quickeners. Mm. We, now, we are now quickening spirits. Mm. You know, we were sold in uh, natural, now we are spiritual. We resurrected spiritual. Mm. So we can now, I can walk to someone who does not have Jesus Christ in his life. Mm. And speak the gospel, mm. knowing and expecting that that person will come to Christ. Mm. Now, if we get to know this, in our lodges, in our residential places, in our offices, mm. once we see someone who is misbehaving, instead of us complaining that this lecturer is sleeping around, this is, I have a quickening spirit. Mm. I remember a young lady, a young lady that was looking for accommodation, sorry, um, she did her diploma when uh, this campus was doing diploma, they, they did her diploma and she passed. But you know, randomly, the man just removed her name. Mm. Okay, no, no, not removed her name. Okay, she did not pass that first instance. But through, you know, God's providence, they were asked to choose any of the courses to write. That was the first time they ever did that. I'm talking about, mm, 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 oh, remember. Mm. Uh -huh. So, some, so her, her grade was upgraded. And then she, she, she was admitted. But through the process of reducing and on, one man, in, one, he said this man is enough to be his lecturer now you know started doing whatever that if you don't appreciate me mm. that i was the one that if you don't appreciate me mm. your name will not appear mm. and that was it so the man kept on pushing so she came and told me i said the man that did something to you you must appreciate the man mm. I, said, I, I said you must have somebody said appreciate you have to appreciate mm. because the man said appreciate you are the one hearing something else yes. so the man finally told her the way she wants it mm. the one the appreciation which she refused. She started dodging the man. So I told her, no. I said, you have to appreciate the man. I said, you've seen where this man is mm. going to, which mm. means this man is dead. Mm. And you are born again. I said, it would be, it would be wickedness mm. if this man does not get born again. Mm. If, it is wicked, if you don't appreciate. appreciate him with new life, mm. if you don't appreciate him with eternal life, I, by the time I was done talking with her, she was the one that called the man and said, sir, I want to come and see you. And it was in his office. Mm. She walked into that man's office and started speaking to that man. This was a man she was running away mm, from. Mm. And she's speaking to that man boldly. 
the master saying, eh, mm, I'm, 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 I'm. Eh, the way people are saying, it's not, it's not as though this is I'm doing, that I like it. She prayed for that man in that office. Like I showed her a dimension. I said, a dead man is crying out for life. Yes. You don't want to give the man life. Mm. I said, God give the man life. Mm. The only thing is that you don't do it in a hotel room or whatever. No. Mm. Office. You are she called the man, sir, I want to, not the man is calling you on an afraid. Mm. Sir, I want to see you. You know, the man will now say, hey. But she entered there and gave eternal mm. life. Mm. If you have resurrection life in me, mm. If in my lodge I have resurrection power, mm. it means that everybody I can transmit yes. it. Yes. If you come into a lodge where there is no light, and then I have about 12 kVA generator, mm. what is there not connecting? And then they pay me mm. if I need to be paid, maybe mm. put on fuel. I give them. It will be somehow that every night it's only in my room that there's light. That there's light, and what I have is maybe 12 kVA that can serve the entire, that can serve the entire lodge, mm. and I'm just using bulb radio. And I'm not transmitting it. You know what will happen? And this is exactly the reason. When I was in school, there was something God taught me, which I, I, I've been living by. That when you get into anywhere and you don't preach the gospel there, that the unbelievers there, somehow, they may not know that's not what they are doing. But the reason they are attacking you is like, so you have what we need and you are not giving it to us. So they come attacking you. So when I was in school, God told me as long, in fact, he told me before I left, he said, as long as you're in this orca, orca cannot swat, take your blood. Mm. Because us, unless you don't pay the price you have to mm. pay. So if I have a quickening spirit in me, I can transmit this to anybody who is not born again. That's why when we say go and start ROL, it is a proof that I believe that I've resurrected. Mm. I can't say that I'm resurrected and there's no proof. Mm. I can't just sit down here, we're excited. Mm. Pastor is saying this and we're excited. Like I was saying on, on Wednesday, many times this excitement just gets down on our skin, mm. gets down on our emotion. And once the emotion is lifted, the, excite, the, the, the revelation at that point, not revelation now, what we heard just lifts. But if I believe this, if I see somebody who is not born again, mm. I tell myself, I can transmit mm. this life. Mm. I can get this person back mm. to life. Mm. And it makes me start ROL. Mm. It makes me start preaching. If I have an ROL, I know that this can be better. Yes. Mm. If it used to be two persons or three, when I begin to talk to somebody about Jesus, I, I say it, it from a different dimension. Like, I am coming to give you life. Because that is exactly what it is. Apart from getting born again, it's also like that in our family. Whatever it is that is happening in our family, because I have eternal, Bible call it quickening spirit. Mm. I can quicken. I can get angry. Mm. You know, you can just get angry about something happening in your family. Mm. You know, I, I can be rejoicing. Okay, now look at the songs. I know who I am. I'm, I'm walking in power. It will be like hypocrisy. Mm. I'm walking in power and thing of don't power. Don't demonstrate power. Exactly. Mm. I'm walking in power, but I don't demonstrate it. Mm. Oh, oh my God. Mm. So if I am walking in power, if a power puta, mm. I am if a power. Now, if it, it seems that it does not bow, I don't I don't back out. Mm. What do I do? I get back to the word. Mm. I say, how does it work? Mm. How do you now keep on looking at the switch? How does it work? If, if there's someone that has used it before, you go to that person. How do you switch on this weakening mm. weakening spirit? Mm. How do you switch on this power? Mm. Because there is a need for power in, and I know I have power, mm. but I've prayed, and it's as though it's not working. How do I switch on this power? When you learn it, you go back again. The point is that you don't withhold your hand until the power thing mm. is expressed. And let me tell us what's going to happen. When we begin to put this thing into practice, of tipulu, others say tipulu. If healing tipulu like this, mm. it will be very easy for you mm. to believe financial mm. prosperity. Mm. If you begin to lead people to Christ, healing them, it will, be diff it will be easier for you to do any other thing. So while we learn this thing, the reason for the resurrection power is that God will have more Jesus mm. walking in the streets, raising the dead, healing people, mm. and destroying all the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. You know, this reminded me of what Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. You know, he showed up and told them, all power is given unto me. That is after the resurrection. In heaven and in earth. Yeah, it has been given unto me. Look at verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. So beyond the celebration of Easter, there is the mandate of Easter. Yes. Yes. The mandate of Easter is to go. 
So beyond that uh, celebration, understand that there is now work to do. You know, there was a time when this um, HIV thing came out newly. There were people that were bent on spreading it. Yes, yes. They knew they had it. Yes, yes. And some of them were spreading it out of um, anger and bitterness yes. against the person who yes. gave it to them. Yes. Particularly some ladies. There are some ladies. Rolling to Tuta. Because a man gave it to the, the mm. they said they must spread it everywhere. Yes, yes. So they started sleeping with every tomb they can have. And what we tell you, you know, it's just like the Bible says, it's the man that God hates <laughs> that will fall into that type of, you know. So she now painstakingly started sleeping around intentionally. Not as though she was enjoying what, what, what yes. it was. She decided to spread it. In preaching the gospel, you don't need to enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> you just need to be intentional about it. This thing has to be transmitted. You, you know, yes. You see, like electricity. Just imagine what would have happened if electricity is generated in Kainji Dam and Shiroro Dam and some of those other dams and kept there. And then we'll be saying, Nigeria, uh, can Nigeria you know, how many megawatts, how many megawatts of clapping. electricity? Just like one woman said in the village when they were interviewing her. She told the interviewer, let Nigeria keep her megawatts, give us light. <laughs> because she doesn't understand, she doesn't what, understand what megawatts, what megawatts is. is. Yeah. We want light. Yeah. You know, all this you are saying megawatts, megawatts, that's not my business. I want light in my house. <laughs> so you see, generating all those things and keep them in Kainji Dam, keep them in Shiroro Dam, keep them in all those dams. That is what we usually do. We come to church. Ah! Yes. Midman conference is coming. Ah, people pray, roll on the floor. Hey, 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 power of God. Hey, okay. Okay. That's okay. Somebody said that's okay. But say that's not enough. So, what's the purpose of that generation of power? Hey, 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 hey. What's the reason? Why was it given? Why was that encounter? Why? God Almighty doesn't empower people so that they can go to bed. He doesn't need to empower you to sleep. He empowers people so that they can perform a certain assignment. Power is for a purpose. And when it comes to this resurrection power we are talking about now, Jesus said the purpose is to spread it. One of the reasons uh, Stephen was martyred was because the spread stopped. He said, no, you are supposed to be witnesses not only in Jerusalem. So they started doing what is called fellowship itis. You know, once you hear itis, it's inflammation. Like appendicitis. The inflammation of the appendix. It's not when you you know, you say, I have appendix. You have, everybody has appendix, except you've surgically removed your own appendicectomy. So everybody has appendix, except you have removed yours surgically. But when it is inflamed, like when your eyes are inflamed, they say it's Apollo, Abby. And so we call it conjunctivitis. So what they were doing in Jerusalem was fellowshipitis. So they were paraborizing among themselves. They were just meeting in the temple, just enjoying fellowship, prayer, enjoying resurrection power, doing everything. Jesus said, bros, that's not what I said. Well, let me see how I can scatter you. He tried whatever, no way. He tried arresting Peter, no way. James killed, no way. All this, no way. He said, okay, Stephen, <laughs> it's your turn. Now, the moment Stephen was martyred, all of them scattered. And he said, yes, this is what I want. But we don't wait till that martyrdom occurs. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So now he has given us responsibility. Just as he said, go therefore and teach all nations. Go now and teach all nations. Yeah, you have the power. It's been given to me. I'm giving it to you and now sending you with it to go. Because teaching requires power. You don't just go and teach your opinion or philosophy. Yes. Anytime you teach your idea, 
you will make, raise men in your image. Yes. 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 You teach his idea. You raise men in his image. Yes. And the people he will approve and accept are those that conform to the image of his son. Yes. Not the image of a human being. Are you getting the point? Yes. Okay. Pastor TJ, there's something, you know, so that we can tie up this thing. Okay. Um, okay. What I wanted to say is this go. <laughs> is this okay. go? Because okay. that is one thing that the resurrection gives. But then let me just add this part. That is, it makes us, because for us to receive Christ, we did nothing. Christ did everything for us. But for us to become Christ, we have to give up everything that mm. makes us up. Mm. Do you understand that? Mm. So it, it, it simply means that any aspect as you are going, any aspect by which you receive pain is actually an aspect of you that need to die. Mm. Because if, 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 if you watch the, the progress with which Jesus gets to the grave, there were certain pains mm. he undergo mm. until he died. Mm. You know, just the, the best definition of pain I have ever seen, you know, pain is proof that you are still alive. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. Dead people don't feel pain. <laughs> the point is when... I like that. I like that. If you want to clap, clap. Oh. It's a good time to clap. Pain is proof you are alive. And so offense. Yes, sir. You are corrected. You are offended. You are alive. Yes, sir. You are alive unto yourself. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, you need to die. And God will oversee your death. The way he oversaw his son's death. Yes. Yes. Mm. Okay, please continue. Thank you, sir. Most times, when we start undergoing the process of salvation, the pains we, 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 we feel, for example, they talk to me anyhow. It is because when you are an unbeliever, if they talk to you anyhow, there's how it used to pain you. Mm. Now that you are in Christ, it needs to come up so that God can kill it. Mm. So, so you see, all those attitudes of, I can't submit, I can't be this, this one is talking, uh, HOD did this, this one do the other one. These are aspects you need to die. That is, any time a pain comes, just know that it is an aspect for you to put down mm. so that you can do what the resurrection gives to us, to go out. If not, as you are going out, that thing which you have not dealt with, it will floor you mm. in your going out. Mm. Therefore, mm. God will take you through processes. From the day you give your life to Christ, mm. you will start seeing things that will be getting you angry. And those anger is so that you will die. It is because your flesh is alive. It is purely spiritual. So every part of you that is alive will die to be effective in Christianity. I will stop here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know, you know, we want to tidy up because we are out of time. Eh? Um, anyway, next time when we get the chance, we are going to come back and continue if it's not resurrection, but at least we have done a little tidying work on this. Easter celebration, resurrection power, and whatever. Let's not ignore the mandate. Yes, yes, I've got the power. Then I should distribute it. So you see, the power sector is divided into three. There's the generation aspect. There's the transmission aspect. And there's the distribution aspect. Now, generation is completely useless if it can't get to the people. Yes. So why are you wasting time generating it? So why are we wasting time? The salt is absolutely useless when it stays in the shaker. It becomes useful when it gets out of the shaker. Your usefulness in church is your contribution to the build-up of church. After that, the next dimension is your usefulness in society. Light doesn't shine in light. I don't know if you try to put on your phone touch now, you see that there's light here. It doesn't make much difference. But go and put it on when there's power. Oh, you know, there's the type of darkness that is matter. That you want to move in the darkness is pushing you back. I don't know if you've experienced that type of darkness. The Bible calls it pitch or gross darkness. In gross darkness, the tiniest flicker of light is relevant. Yes. No matter how small the light is, it is clearly seen when there is pitch darkness. Therefore, don't ever belittle your light. The world is in pitch darkness and needs it badly. There's one song 
um, we used to sing as children. Our children stay singing now. This little, I don't know my key. This little light of mine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Thank you very much. Let's sing it again. Everybody stand on your feet. Let's sing it together. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it Can we sing it one more time? Just one more time. This little light. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Jesus clearly said. Men do not light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a candle stand, it gives light to all in the house. Now, in this place, we have provided candle stands. ROL are candle stands. You can now stand on that platform and shine, shine your light. So, anybody who has not started, give it a try. You will see how your life will improve. Your life begins to improve when you begin to sense an urgent need for being responsible for others once that sensing comes into your life that you are responsible for others you stop living carelessly there are certain things you no longer do for instance you see some of our parents there were things they gave up because they knew they were responsible for people not as though they didn't like those things they like them but for the sake of the children they are responsible for these children. Can you know? Sometimes I have watched my mother, especially. She will want to buy. It's not as though she doesn't like the flashy things. So she likes them, but she will want to buy chocolate. She will remember that there's no Maggie. Does she like chocolate? Yes. But is there Maggie at home? No. She converts the money and buys Maggie. For goes chocolate. Listen. You want to buy RC Coke. You remember there are those dependent on your growth. You change your mind and buy a book. Not as though you don't like RC. You like it. But it gives you momentary pleasure. The other one gives you an eternal impact in your spirit and makes you more capable to shoulder responsibilities for human lives. There are sacrifices everybody needs to make just the way the Son of God made the supreme sacrifice for us all. We have to also. Because that John 3.16, if you flip it to the other side, you get 1 John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If you now flip it, because there are two sides to the cross. You flip it to the other side. He now said, hereby we perceive the love of God. This is how we see it. Because he laid down his life for us. What should we do? We now lay our lives down for others. Because there are two sides. If you look at this cross now, there is a side that is facing you. That is what many people see. There is a side that is backing you. The side that is facing you is substitutionary sacrifice. Jesus died on the cross. The side that is backing you is now your own sacrifice for the one who died. That's the reverse side. He said, so that they that now live will no longer live for themselves, for, but for the one who died. So when I'm done receiving him, I now go behind the cross and start living for him. So that life he did not live, I have the responsibility to live it. Those people he didn't reach, I now have the responsibility to reach them. So that thing he did not do, he has now given me power to complete the work. 
and then I have to do it because that's the flip side of the cross. The cross is not complete until these two sides. Just the way you can transact, for instance, with a currency that only has one face. There has to be two faces for you transacting with a coin or note or something. There has to be two faces. If one face is lost, you can't make transaction. It's not a legal tender. So the cross has to be looked at both ways. So there's the one Christ did for me. There's now the one I do for him. It is in my doing for him that the impact of the cross becomes real to me. That is when I understand what he did for me. Lift your voice and ask him, Lord, help me to live for you. I don't want to mess up your name in my generation. In this dark world, help me to shine as light. I'm a light bearer. Let me shine as light in a dark world. If this world stays dark, then there's a problem with light. The problem is not with darkness. The problem is, is with light. Evil thrives when good men do nothing. Come on. If this is your desire, please ask God. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray like you mean what you're saying. And mean it when you say it. Please pray. And in case you are here, you are not born again. There's no business God has investing in you. No, 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 no. He has to purchase you first. He has to redeem you first. If you are not born again and you want to be born again, please come. Come and meet me here. If you are watching from any of our branches and you are not born again, please stand up. Somebody will lead you to Christ right where you are. And if you are somewhere where nobody can do that for you, probably in your hospital bed, or in your home or something put your hand on your chest and ask Jesus to come into your life to be your Lord and Savior so that he can begin his investments in your life as his purchased possession but if you are in this assembly you are not born again please come come to the altar come to the altar break that thing and come to the altar break that thing that is holding you back because that thing that is holding you back is conspiring against your destiny. Something.